that speech because we don't often think about how important the ships were to Elizabethans in England because that was their big way of, of, tr of getting through Europe and colonizing. So well done on that. And that was a really good project on Francis Drake uh, that, that you did. Uh, excellent. Let's, let's give Mark a, a round of applause for that. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so characters from the Renaissance. Who else have we to hear from? David, let's hear who you chose to research. Um, I, I couldn't do it. You, you I couldn't do it? No, um, because uh, my Wi-Fi has been broken the past couple of days and I couldn't been able to do it without the Wi-Fi. So your Wi-Fi was broken for the past couple of days? Yeah. And we gave this project out three weeks ago and everybody else seemed to get it done. But three weeks went by and you didn't do anything, did you? Why didn't you do it in the time before um, your Wi-Fi broke? I was doing other projects. I, I had other projects to do as well. And I was planning to do this one the past couple of days, so it would lead up to here. But I, This I, is I and Cert history. This is the class, everybody, as you all know, that you get points in to add to your final score to go on to college or whatever you want to do with the rest of your life. But in order to do that, you have to do homework. There are four times now, David, this year so far, that you have not done key research or important homework. Four times. That's not really the way to carry on an Leaving Cert history class. So after class, I'm going to sit with you and find out what's going on, okay? At the stay back at the end of this class and we'll, we'll just find out. Okay, um, Michelle, did you do it? Yeah, I researched William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, there you go, William Shakespeare. There you go, William Shakespeare. Let's hear about William Shakespeare, a figure from the Renaissance. Um, I heard that he married his wife. Do I do? Um, I could say, um, what do I say? Um, I could say I'm, like I've only, I've, I've, I'm here only a couple of years. That, 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 that could definitely, like I, like I didn't know how to research on things. And, Well, <sighs> David, David, David. What's going on? I'll, 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 I'll be honest. Um, you? I like uh, honesty. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of struggling with like research and just the whole English English of it. And yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Why are you struggling though? I I think it's just I I, I haven't I've only been here couple of years and I'm still transitioning with the language and I'm just struggling to match that up with the okay. everything and it's not my kind of history that I'm used to yeah okay yeah no I forgot I forgot that you'd moved uh, here from where was it uh, Turkey from Turkey because uh, you fit in so well here yeah okay so the language is causing you a problem some of the Okay, well, that's surprising. I thought you'd good English, really good English. So, okay, so what we'll do is uh, I have extra notes about this subject and topic yeah. and about all the ones that you've missed. Mm -hmm. I'll give you those and I'll send them to you in slides mm -hmm. so, so you, can, you can work with those. And I, I'll work with you once a week for half an hour. Perfect. Maybe uh, we can find a slot at lunch mm -hmm. that we can do. Um, and great. just to catch up. Yeah, that's, that's re that's, that, that sounds really good. Yeah, okay. I 100% agree. Yeah, it's really just about getting your confidence back because yeah. your English is good. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hundred percent agree. I think I need that bit of help. Okay, good, yeah. perfect. Good thank, well thank you very much. Okay, thank you.
one belt they gave me too. Uh, yeah, sure, okay. Um, so a bunch of the girls are coming over to mine tonight. You know, the girls are in your French room. Yeah, my mom's going to get like pizzas and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, would you like to come? Um, uh, yeah, okay. We'd love uh, to see I'll you there. ask. Yeah, okay. Um, um, just need to know in advance. My mom's got to like buy everything. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, I'll see you tonight then. Yeah. Okay, then. okay yeah, um, I have you. to go. Okay. You shouldn't eat that. Everybody's looking at you. You're gonna look disgusting. That's not something I should be eating. You'll look disgusting. It's unhealthy. Eat something much healthier. Nothing tastes good. Why are you eating that? I'm going to put it back on the table. Everyone is looking at you. Everyone is looking at you right now. Put it back on the table. I shouldn't be eating this. I'm going to get it out. Don't eat that, please. Don't. Everybody's watching you. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Do not eat that. Jane, I guess you know um, why you're here. Jay. Sorry? It's Jay. Jay, okay. Jay, I guess you know why you're in here. No, I actually, I, I don't know why I'm here. You don't know why you're here? No. Jane, not 30 minutes... Jay. Jay, I'm sorry. Not 30 minutes ago, you attacked another student okay, in the corridor. Okay, I did not attack another student. You smashed a book out of a young woman's hand. I didn't smash a book out of somebody's hand. Three people saw you. Three. And not only three other people, one of them was a teacher. And they saw you and they were very surprised, Look, but not me. Look, she was me. staring directly at me. I, think I politely told her to go away. In any other context, this would be called bullying. In fact, that was bullying. bullying. That's extreme She was bullying. staring at me. She was invading my personal space. You cannot express your feelings like this, untrammeled, uncontrolled, in a school context. I told her to stop context. looking at me. This is almost but abusive. But she was staring I'm at going, me. I'm going to have to ring your parents to see Sorry, if we can okay, bring I, them along. No, no, I, I did do it. I did do it. You did do it. Okay. All right. So... Something is clearly bothering you because this girl Lucy did nothing to you whatsoever as far as we can establish. This kind of incident is not the first time that you've been violent, that you've uh, shown such, such aggression. You, you storm out of class regularly, you slam doors, you kick furniture, you've broken your locker. By kicking it, you've almost punched another student. This is all in the last couple of weeks. What's going on? There's clearly something happening. Well, sometimes I just feel like the people around me, I, they, well, I get frustrated because the people around me, I feel like they don't really understand me or sometimes I feel like I just don't understand myself or I, I know it's weird, but like I feel like I'm not comfortable with who I am and the person I was chosen to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a sister, and she always wanted to do these girly things with me, but I I never wanted to do them. You know, when I was younger, she would always give out to me because I wouldn't play with her dolls or anything, but I just, I didn't, I didn't want to. And the school, they always tell me, oh, you should wear a skirt to school, and some of the other girls say, you should wear a skirt as well. But I'd rather just wear the clothes that I feel the most comfortable in. I just, I'm sorry, that's, it's fine. Well, yeah. So, 
All right, well, Jay, there's a lot going on for you. So why don't we try and do something about this? These are an organisation that can talk to young people. They're set up specifically to speak to young people. You can ring them any time. Mm -hmm. they're, they're available at any time, day or night. Uh, they will always answer. Um, if you're getting a lot of confused thoughts or you're confused about yourself, it's handy to have somebody outside of school time that you can talk to. And sometimes there are people your own age there as well okay. that you can speak to. Another one is this one, which is, it's, it's for young people and it's for young people with anxiety or depression. Um, they, they also can, can talk to you, certainly by text. This is for young people specifically. Okay, Take that yeah. one with you as well. You can text them and they'll respond by text anytime. Thank you. Okay. I need to get out of here. I need to go to the bathroom. I don't know how to ask in a way that nobody will suspect anything from me, that there's something wrong. I just need to go. If I seem like there's something wrong with me, then people will know that there's something wrong with me. I don't want that. Um, I just need to get out. Uh, I could... Um, I, I don't know, I could, I could just be, can't stay here. Can I go to the bathroom? Hello? 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 It is really hard to be in an environment that makes you constantly uncomfortable. Especially if it is your house, your family's house. When you are young, you cannot control some things such as the decisions of your parents. We came to this country when I was nine. It was really hard to leave my own country, my friends, my loved ones, and the environment that makes me comfortable. But anyway, I got through it. When I was 15, my father fell into debt, big debt. He became bankrupt. Because of the bankruptcy, everything changed in our house. We were not the same family as we were before. My parents were having arguments constantly. I was trying to stay away from those arguments, but every sentence was pushing me downwards to the ground. I wasn't able to share my feelings with anyone. How could I? When my friends were talking about their families, I noticed that this is just happening to me. Their families are normal. And I thought it would be shameful to talk about our poverty. So, I hid my story, and as a result, none of my teachers knew, and they treated me as if I was lazy and problematic. Hey mom, I need to tell you something, and uh, I need you to listen, and then we can talk about it. Um. I got diagnosed with eating disorders. 
this has been going on for so long since school. I wish I knew what was happening to me then. I know it will be hard for you to understand and I don't expect you to. I just need you to acknowledge this fact. So yeah, I'm sick. But I'm doing better. A lot better actually. My therapist says I have to forgive myself and forgive you as well. Forgive you for always controlling me and wanting me to be perfect. I'm not perfect. And that's okay. So, this is me forgiving you. I forgive you. This is the message I sent to my mother when I was 22. Just out of the therapist's office the first time. You know, the more I think about it, the more sense it makes why I was acting up so much in school. Like, I was just stuck in the worst vicious circle. I was having so many problems at school. And I think it's because, well, I just wanted someone to listen to me. And I don't like saying it, but I think it began at around the age of five. Three days after my fifth birthday, my mother just walked out of the house. And we never, we never saw her again. And from that moment on, my father just was drinking his sorrows away. We thought maybe he would drink till he died. Somehow he got full custody of us. And he became awful. He would lock himself in his room and we would only ever go in to give him food or even more beer maybe and i just remember my hand trembling on the door handle because i knew once i opened that door a belt or a beer bottle or something was going to come launched at me pelted at me so at that age i was trying to understand who i was and what i wanted to be and, and that's a lot for a child to have to try to deal with I had a lot on my mind, and I just needed someone to listen. I thought then that maybe school is, is somewhere that would listen to me, you know? I went to someone who was a counsellor, for God's sake, like, isn't his job to listen to people? But he didn't. He just gave me pamphlets. Wow. So good. And I know that all my behavior problems in school would have been fixed if I had just one adult, just someone who listened or even like tried to listen, someone who just pretended they cared. That's all I needed. Someone could just step up and talk to me. There was one person that helped me get by when I was still in school. Miss Yorvaka, my language teacher. If you're seeing this, I want to say thank you. I remember a specific trip to the seaside. Everyone was going into the water learning how to swim. I was dreading that moment. You, I guess you sensed it and you came and asked me to go with you to get the tickets for the show we were watching later. Um, that was the first time that someone offered me a choice. Until then, my life was controlled. Everything, every bite, every word. But you offered me a choice, and of course I went with you. And all year, you kept offering me choices, novels to read, activities to do, places to visit. So for all of that, thank you. I got through all the problems that I had during that period, and I recovered. Because one day, one of my teachers came and gave me a book about creative writing. Mr. Karaja. If you are seeing this, I would love to thank you so much. I owe you a lot. I will never forget the conversations that we had, and I will never forget your support. One good adult can make a big difference in someone's life. You were the one good adult in my life. Thank you. So if you're seeing this, Miss Murphy, 
I don't even know if you're, if you're seeing this, but if you are, I want to thank you. Because for me, you were that one good adult. I remember that whenever you used to go to the cafeteria to get the wrap, to get your daily wrap, you would track me down in the queue, see where I was, and you would take me aside and you'd ask how I was doing. Sometimes we talked for like 10 minutes in the cafeteria, however long the queue was, but you did it. Every day you just asked, how was I? And you listened to me. And even though you didn't know how to deal with my identity, you still cared. And you made me feel like there were people out there who would listen to me and understand me. And that made all the difference. It was all I needed. Just because a young person is misbehaving doesn't mean that they're just having a laugh. Trauma can affect young people in many different ways. All it takes is one teacher could just reach out. So if you're a teacher and you're seeing this, then thank you. Thank you. Thank you.